Congratulations on completing the task and well done on writing your first program to perform Monte Carlo integration. We are not quite done with this exercise because there is one final important issue that we have to consider when we perform these types of calculation, namely the statistical error. This issue forms the basis of the next two tasks you will have to perform and is also what you will be studying when you do the other block the exercise that forms part of this chapter. Before we get on to that, however, let's briefly summarise how the algorithm that you've just coded works. What we are trying to do, remember, is to determine the integral of the line shown here. When we would determine the area under this curve using the algorithm that we've just implemented, we first find a rectangle that encompasses the whole integral. The base of this rectangle has a length of b, and the height of this rectangle is a. In your case, this rectangle was a square with a side length of 1. You generate this box in your imagination, however. The first thing that your Python code does is it sets two variables equal to 0, as shown here. The code then selects one point at random inside the rectangle by generating two random, uniform random variables using numpy random.uniform. Once this random point is generated, the code then checks whether or not it is underneath the curve that you would like to integrate. This particular point we have chosen here is not underneath the curve, and thus the variable z is set equal to 0 when the inshape function is called. If the point is under the curve, then z is set equal to 1. The code then proceeds by incrementing the two variables that were set equal to 0 at the start. The variable n here counts the number of random variables that have been generated, so it is increased by 1. The variable f sum, by contrast, counts the number of times that the points generated were underneath the curve. z is therefore added to this quantity. The code repeats this procedure of selecting random points and accumulating these quantities, n and f sum, many, many times. In other words, all the code in the yellow box here will need to be inside a for loop. Once this for loop is completed, the final integral is calculated using the expression shown at the bottom of the slide. The key point to recognise in this exercise is that the area that we calculate this way is a function of a sample mean which is computed from a sample of the many random variables. In other words, this area that we have calculated is itself a random variable. Consequently, if we were to repeat our calculation, we would get a different answer. In other words, when we compute an integral using Monte Carlo, we are sampling from a distribution. We thus shouldn't simply take the first sample from our distribution as the answer. We should instead take multiple samples and should attempt to characterise the shape of the distribution that we are taking these samples from. The simplest way to do this characterization is just to calculate multiple samples as we did when we were doing the exercises involving the random variables. In short, we can write a function that calculates our integral as shown on the right of this slide. Notice that this content of this function is equivalent to the code that was on the previous slide and that the variable tot in is counting the number of generated points that lie underneath the curve that we are integrating. Notice furthermore that the final value this function is returning is a sample mean computed by taking n samples from a Bernoulli distribution. The function that is on this slide is in the end just yet another way of generating a random variable. We can thus calculate a sample from this distribution the same way we would calculate a sample from any other distribution, i.e. by using the code shown here. Then, once we have our sample, we can calculate any of the summary statistics that you learnt about during the exercises that you completed during the first three weeks of the semester. The method that I have just introduced is called resampling the distribution, and I hope that you agree that it is relatively straightforward. To make sure you understand it, the next task asks you to implement this approach and to use it to compute an estimate for the area of the quarter circle together with the 10th and 90th percentiles of the distribution, or, as we call these quantities from now on, the 80% confidence limit around our mean. Good luck.